Hello and welcome to the latest episode of MPP Insider, your source for all the latest news in the marijuana policy reform movement. I'm Mike Mino. I'm Kurt Gardner. And if you're wondering why Kurt and I are wearing ties today, uh, it's as a uh, silent tribute to the ongoing uh, legislative session. Uh, right now, all across the country, state legislatures are back in session and many of them are considering proposals to improve their state's uh, marijuana laws. Uh, we're here to tell you about some of them today and starting us off right now, Kurt is going to talk about the District of Columbia. Yes, uh, D.C. And, and, you know, proposing, you know, states are talking about proposing marijuana laws and also improving marijuana laws, like you said, in D.C. They're, they're looking in discussing to implement uh, a medical marijuana law that was passed overwhelmingly by D.C. voters in 1998. Nearly 70 percent of voters uh, in 98 so it's, uh, voted in support of the medical marijuana law. Uh, last Tuesday, I attended a, a hearing uh, with the D.C. City Council, uh, and it was very successful. Uh, over 50 people testified, um, generally in favor um, of the medical marijuana law. Uh, basically, what, 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 they, what the people who were testifying were discussing were, you know, not really criticizing, but offering their suggestions on how the law should be implemented, mm -hmm. how many uh, dispensaries should, should be located in, uh, within the city, where they should be located, um, how far away from schools they should be. So it was, it was a very productive uh, hearing and it was a, a good lesson, uh, a good civics lesson. Um, so it was good. I, I attended the hearing as, as, uh, as well as uh, Morgan Fox, uh, who also works for the communications department, and uh, our very own uh, Dan Riffle, our legislative analyst. He uh, testified at the hearing. So it, it overall went really well. And then uh, last week as well, you, you attended the hearing. Yeah, well, I, was at you? A, uh, I was at a hearing for uh, pending medical marijuana legislation in, uh, in Maryland. There are two bills being proposed that would, uh, like we said, enhance uh, the standing law in Maryland. Right now, Maryland provides a limited defense for patients, uh, meaning that they can still get arrested for having marijuana, but if they can prove a, ne a medical necessity in court, they can walk away with a $100 fine, but they still have a criminal conviction on their record, and we obviously think that's not right. And we also think these patients need uh, a means of safe access to their uh, medicine, which state law in Maryland currently doesn't provide. Um, so what this hearing was, was uh, an opportunity for proponents, and there were dozens of people there. There were uh, politicians, uh, former politicians, uh, pre previous members of law enforcement, lawyers, uh, doctors, uh, patients themselves were testifying in favor of this law. And surprisingly, Kurt, guess how many people testified in opposition to this? None. None is right. In fact, in previous years in Maryland when they tried to pass medical marijuana laws, uh, law enforcement almost always testified against the laws. This time, law enforcement is taking no stance whatsoever, and nobody was present to testify against it, so it was, it was a real promising development. Um, once again, uh, one of our legislative analysts, Dan Riffle, was there to testify, along with Karen O'Keefe, our Director of State Policies. They did a great job, as always, and uh, we're, we're proud to, to see it. Great. Yeah. And now, uh, what else is happening in uh, Nevada? Kurt? We'll talk about the uh, great state yeah. of Nevada, uh, where um, a group called uh, Nevadans for Sensible Marijuana Laws is being run by a friend of ours, uh, Dave Schwartz, out there. And uh, at the end of January, they uh, submitted uh, the petition to the Secretary of State um, to, to begin the process of being approved to start gathering signatures. Um, and it was the first time an initiative uh, in four years that was not contested in terms of the language uh, of the initiative. The first time that, that it wasn't contested in four years, which, which, was, which says a lot. Um, so now, now the, uh, today, actually, officially, the signature drive has begun. So Nevadans for Sensible Marijuana Laws will, uh, has begun gathering signatures to place an initiative on the November 2012 uh, ballot, which would tax and regulate marijuana similarly to alcohol. Yeah, something to look forward to. Yeah, definitely. So if you're in Nevada, uh, check out uh, Nevadans uh, for Sensible Marijuana Laws and, and look into uh, how to uh, sign their petition. Some other stuff to look forward to is uh, we have a few proposals right now in uh, several states uh, that would expand the list of states that right now have decriminalized uh, marijuana laws, meaning they remove uh, criminal penalties for possession of small amounts of marijuana and replace them with a civil fine. Um, yesterday, the Hawaii State Senate, by an overwhelming veto-proof margin, mm -hmm. love being able to say that, uh, passed uh, a bill that would reduce the penalty for, I believe, up to an ounce of marijuana to a $300 civil fine for the first offense, $500 fine for subsequent offenses. It now goes to the House, um, so you know we're, we're optimistic about that. Also in New Hampshire, there is a uh, vote on the House floor coming up any day now uh, that could uh, also pass a, a decriminalization measure in that state. 
and uh, it, it made it out of committee by an overwhelming uh, margin. We're, we're hoping you know the full house follows the the committee's lead as as they tend to do. Mm -hmm. And then in Vermont, where there's also pending uh, decriminalization measures, the town of Montpelier. Uh, in a non-binding resolution, the citizens themselves voted by a 72 percent uh, margin to uh, ask the state legislature to support uh, this decriminalization effort. So, I mean, great news all around. You know, a, a lot of people are getting on board with it this, this legislative season, and, and we're happy to see it. Uh, you know, go the, go this way. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I mean, we, we don't have enough time to talk about all the positive things that are going on across the country, but we're just, you know, trying to give you the give you the highlights. But if you do want to hear about all the positive things going on, how's this for a plug? Yeah. Check yeah. out our blog, blog.mpp.org, where Kurt, myself, and uh, several others will uh, up update you on, on the latest happenings uh, with some uh, some opinions, some news stories, whatever, uh, whatever suits your fancy. Yeah. Uh, and uh, let's talk about the DEA. We talk about them quite often on, the, on this uh, program. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, so, so always, the, always a downer. It is a downer. Um, but the DEA recently, uh, a State Department study came out, um, which basically said that the amount of marijuana seized by the DEA doubled from 2008 uh, to 2009, which is incredible. Um, but at the same time, um, production in Mexico uh, by drug cartels increased by 35%. So, at, so let me get this straight. Yeah. The DEA is seizing more marijuana that, you know, they're saying is here illegally, we're going to take it, and that's just leading the Mexicans to grow more. Yeah, they're just growing more. So, yeah. so, so clearly, um, our marijuana laws and marijuana prohibition great, great policy, DEA. is, is yeah. not working. You take more marijuana and they just grow more. Yeah, so. more yeah. money for the cartels, uh, fueling for their bloodshed on, on, on the border. Definitely. It's just, yeah. yeah, it's yeah. terrible. So Definition of a failed policy right there. That is the definition of a failed policy. And if they want to consider a successful solution, Kurt, wouldn't the right answer be to tax and regulate marijuana? To, uh, to control right. this market, to no longer hand it over to cartels that's and right. give them a monopoly on, on and the nation's provision. largest cash crop? That's right. $36 billion industry, bigger than corn and wheat combined. And right now it's untaxed, unregulated, and controlled solely by criminals. So we need to tax and regulate marijuana like alcohol. Yeah, and stay tuned to uh, to MPP, our, our website, uh, these video blogs, our, uh, our online blog yep. for, for ways that you can uh, help us to make that happen. And to view past um, MPP Insider episodes, you can visit youtube.com slash MPP staff. So you can check out every uh, episode that, that we've ever done. So I think I'm going to wrap it up. Is that all right? Go for it. All right. For the Marijuana Policy Project, I'm Kirk Gardner. I'm Mike Mino. We'd like to thank you for watching the latest edition of MPP Insider.